All right, we're ready to talk about differentiability. We have seen already the def definition of the derivative of a function at a particular value a um, exists if this limit exists. We have extended that idea to the derivative function whose domain is the set of all x for which this limit exists. Okay, and since, so since our derivative is a limit and we know that a limit doesn't always exist, we need to somehow talk about differentiability in terms of the limit. So we need a definition or two. All right, so we say f is differentiable at a if f prime of a exists. That is, this limit as h goes to zero of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h exists. If this limit exists at a for, for, for a particular a, then we say the derivative exists at a. Now, f is differentiable on an interval, i, if f is differentiable for all a in that interval. So if I pick an interval, we'll say from c to d, and for every value in this interval, this limit exists, then f is differentiable on that interval. All right? So a natural question is, or may, may be asked, is if I give you a particular function and I ask you to tell me all the places for which that function is differentiable, you would need to be able to answer that question in terms of the limit. So let's look at this. f of x equals the absolute value of x. For which x values is f differentiable, and the interval I'm going to choose is the, the set of all real numbers, is f differentiable on the set of all real numbers. That's the question I'm going to ask. Okay? So let's do a quick sketch of the absolute value because we might use that later on. You never know. Okay? Now, in order to talk about the limit, I need to rewrite the absolute value as a piecewise function. So remember that f of x, the absolute value of x, equals x if x is greater than 0. It equals 0 if x equals 0, and it equals the opposite of x if x is less than 0. Okay? Now, I have two different intervals here. Numbers when x is less than 0, numbers when x is, I'm sorry, greater than 0, numbers where x is less than 0, and I need to be able to talk about all those different places and its respective differentiability. So if I look first where x is greater than 0, Okay, so that's going to be the piece I'm going to look at first. So what does the derivative of f look like for these values? Well, it's equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Now, when x, so I want to replace all these f's with its the way I define f on that particular interval. So for x greater than 0, this is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of, let's see, x plus h minus x all over h. All right? And this is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of h over h, which is 1. So this limit exists for all x values greater than 0. So I know that it's differentiable on that interval, everything less than or greater than 0. Let's look to see what happens when x is less than 0. Okay, so for x less than 0, f prime of x is still equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, but this time I'm going to replace f of x plus h with the negative of it because I'm coming at x less than 0. So for sufficiently small h, x, or x plus h is a negative number. So h to 0, the opposite of x plus h, minus the opposite of x, 
all over h. And I'm just using the way the absolute value function is defined for x less than 0. So this is the limit as h goes to 0, minus x minus h plus x over h. My x's cancel, and I'm left with a minus h over h, which is a negative 1. So this tells, so this limit exists for x values less than 0, so I know that f is differentiable on that interval. So here is my last question. What actually happens at 0? Because this is the place where I change my definition of my function. Okay, so let's actually look at f prime of 0. We've looked at all values on the real number except 0, so let's see what happens there. So f prime of 0 equals the limit as h goes to 0 of f of 0 plus h minus f of 0 all over h. Now, here's where we have to be careful. Because we are looking at the derivative at 0, we are going to be, we need to look at what happens as we come to it from the left and as we come to it from the right. Okay, so let's come down here and look at first the limit as h goes to 0 from the right, which means my h values are going to be positive. So this becomes, first of all, f of, this becomes f of h minus 0 over h. So if I'm picking numbers of our h values to the right of 0, they're positive, so f of h is just h. So this is the limit as h goes to 0 from the right of h over h, which is 1. Now let's look at it from the left. So as h approaches 0 from the left, this be the, my limit still becomes f of h minus 0 all over h, but this time, since h is a negative number, it comes out as the limit as h goes to 0 from the left, negative h over h, which is negative 1. Since these limits aren't equal, this limit does not exist. And that means, let's come back to here, I know that f is differentiable here and here, not differentiable there at 0. So to answer this question, for which x values is f differentiable, our answer would be negative infinity up to 0, union 0 to infinity, but not including 0.